Hi, and welcome to Jankin's Guard on Risk, the YouTube channel dedicated to the theory and practice of risk management. In this video, we're going to talk about how to, um, how to do risk simulations in spreadsheet models. And we're also going to look at some examples of that. For more on the role of simulations in a corporate risk uh, management program, please consult my book, Empowered Enterprise Risk Management, co-authored with Petty Capstan. There's also more information on my webpage, riskbudgeting.se, and as they say here on YouTube, please like and subscribe. All right, so to understand um, simulations, we have to first understand what a scenario is. And uh, to, here it's going to be defined as a descriptive narrative about a possible future state of the world. So we're conjuring up um, a vision of a possible future path for the world economy or the entire world even, um, or whatever setting you're specifically interested in. And, um, but then there's uh, one more thing to consider, and it's that we're ultimately interested in uh, corporate performance. So whatever we're telling in this story uh, about this possible future path for the world, there has to be a connection to corporate performance. You know, we translate this narrative into what it means for corporate performance. So that's when it gets um, practically useful, and, and you know, we have um, a basis for decision support. So that, that comes in addition. Uh, all right, so for example, then, if you're an airliner and you want to learn from what might happen in, in, uh, in the future, well, you develop a few scenarios. Here's scenario A, for example, and you, you envision then a possible uh, path for pa passenger traffic. You know, it, it will be back to pre-pandemic levels by this time. In, in this scenario, that is what plays out. And in the same scenario, yet fuel costs recover by 20% because that's quite likely to be uh, associated with the same kind of rebound in the, in the economy, right? Uh, maybe the dollar weakens by 15% according to some logic that we don't have to go, in, go into here. But this is the scenario. This is how you, the elements around which you build your scenario. And uh, all of these are important for corporate performance. So we take whatever knowledge we have about um, our business and we translate the, these, uh, these variables, these outcomes into corporate performance. So let's say this would mean that EBIT would be approximately 500 million in that year, whereas the cash position is likely to end up around 2 million and so on. There's a connection to corporate performance, very important. Well, uh, simulations are, can, can be thought of as automating the, the scenarios. You, you run several thousands of them. So we're, we're going to, um, use some software here to uh, to do that in an automated fashion and um, keep allow the, the this technology then to uh, keep track of things that would very quickly get out of hand uh, in terms of trying to <laughs> as individuals understand what, what all the things that are going on and all the dynamics that are taking place in this um, in this model so um, meaning that we're not no longer limited to the usual three. I mean, if you take um, how many firms uh, work with this, they, they come up with a budget projection, you know, and, and that's the forecast. Uh, then you see uh, some, some scenarios around that, usually a good and a bad version, like what, what happens if we enter as some bad scenario, you know, what, what would it look like then? What would the budget, budget uh, come out looking in that scenario? But that's usually limited to a handful or you know rather few. So whereas with simulations, uh, you're moving beyond that. You you can instruct it to run um, thousands of them, and and uh, it will keep track of everything that goes on in the, those scenarios. Um, so this uh, makes it possible to do some analytics that are are not possible to do in in any traditional approach. And one benefit is that you can aggregate risk in a much more meaningful way. Like if you have a set of exposures and a set of things going on, well, what do they mean on a combined basis? Simulations are perfect for addressing that sort of aggregation of performance and aggregation of risk. You can construct uh, various risk statistics that help you measure and manage your, your risk profile. Uh, for example, prob probability of type risk measures. Um, and you get, immediate feedback on value corporate policies. These uh, simulations are, you can run them again, you know, assuming another 
policies in place. And then you see what that policy does to the overall risk return profile and you learn from that. And you can, of course, visualize risk in a very powerful way. So you get all sorts of new ways to convey uh, what the risk uh, profile is like and, and how it be, would be affected by changes in corporate policy. So, so the analytics are on a completely different level now compared to traditional spreadsheets, because that's the, the baseline here. Right? We're talking about traditional Excel spreadsheet models where you on various lines come up with forecasts and you derive some bottom line calculations, you know, and, and uh, but what if you could equip these spreadsheet models with dynamics and the capability of uh, for, for scenarios to run scenarios uh, that would open up all these possibilities and higher level analytics. And but what does it take to get there then? I mean, uh, uh, well, first you have to, to see that we're dealing with uncertainty here across the board. All the things in your spreadsheet or nearly all uh, will be really uncertain. There are stochastic variables in the sense that they follow some random process. We, we don't know their um, actual value for sure. The, what we have in the in the forecast in the budget or in the spreadsheet is just uh, our best guess. You know that's where we think it will go. Whereas so many things could happen, right? And uh, there's a whole range of potential outcomes, and and these are random processes. Lots of the more meaningful uh, variables that we work with in 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 our strategy making and our, our business planning, etc., they are stochastic, uncertain. So. It becomes a risk factor to us then if this stochastic variable, you know, it could be the weather or an exchange rate or what have you. Uh, but but it, if it affects corporate performance in a meaningful way, uh, then it's a risk factor. And we want to incorporate that in our risk management framework and get it into the model. Um, so that's a risk factor then. Like in the scenario that we just looked at for the airline um, airline company here, passenger traffic, yeah, fuel price, use a lot would be considered risk factors then because they are important in corporate performance and we cannot know their their um, outcomes in, in the, over the next year, for example. So we need to try to describe the kind of uncertainty we're dealing with for, for each of these uh, risk factors. I mean, it's a matter of uh, trying to get a grip on What's the nature and extent of the uncertainty that we're talking about? Even can we somehow describe that? Um, then we can make some serious uh, progress here. Um, so that's uh, what we're asking here, basically. What kind of random process can this risk factor be assumed to follow? Can we use prior knowledge uh, and data to come up with uh, something that approximates this uh, random process? Right, um, that could be helpful. And uh, indeed, there are quite a number of, uh, or, or a large number actually, of, of, of random processes that we have incorporated into a body of knowledge in, uh, in uh, the discipline of statistics. Here are just uh, three. And they all have different forms and shapes. And, and depending on what kind of randomness you're discussing, one of these will be suitable. And, or, you know, and a large, you have to look at a large number of others as well. Like here, if you're modeling, uh, book sales or, or something like that, or the income distribution, maybe something like this would be suitable for that purpose. Here you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, repeated uh, trials where the probability is known uh, for, for one or two <laughs> um, outcomes. So, so, I mean, they all have their specific applications where it would be legit and correct to assume that random process. And uh, by the way, all the simulations in this uh, video are used or are done using at risk, which is an Excel add on for risk simulations in spreadsheet models. But the two uh, that we're going to talk about now in some detail are the normal distribution. That's the classic um, distribution that we most most of us come across at one point or other. Um, it has this bell classic or characteristic bell shape, bell, bell curve shape, and um, turns out that lots of uh, real real world uh, variables actually approximately follow um, normal distribution. So, so for for a surprisingly large number of phenomena, you can 
described them reasonably well with this distribution. So stock returns, for example, or, or the distribution of height in the, in the population, all these things tend to be approximately <laughs> normally distributed. But that approximately is, is, is an important uh, disclaimer here because um, they, they, they tend to be more tail risk than implied by the normal, et cetera. And, and these are things we have to take seriously and come back to, but, but for now we'll, we'll use the normal. And the discrete is another supremely useful distribution in, in corporate risk management because it, it's about assuming probabilities for a specified number of possible outcomes, three in this case. So you assign the probability mass, has that up to 100, right? To, uh, to each of these, so that this, is, this could be expected, bad, good, and they each have their own probability. All right, so... Okay, so you have to decide then on, on which random process describe, describes uh, this variable best. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you can go to the data if you're fortunate, fortunate enough to have some data of reasonable quality around. We learn from history, we learn from the track records, you know, and, and you can analyze that in, in various ways to come up with an approximation then of the, of the distribution that this uh, process follows. The other way is to subjectively estimate probability. We're talking subjective probabilities done by somebody in the organization or somebody associated with the, the organization. And it gets subjective, yes. We have to sort of use our expertise and, and prior understanding to, to come up with the numbers. So let's say we're dealing with the risk of losing a major customer here. Uh, in, the, in the normal case, we don't expect to do that. So the impact is zero in 88% in of the time, you know that it's an unlikely event that this happens, but the risk is there. Maybe there are rumors or <laughs> stirrings and we grant the possibility of that happening. So what if the, one of the major con um, customers cancel one of the contracts? And there, we, we, we're, we see that this is on, on the horizon here as a possibility. So, so what if there, there's a 10% chance we think after all, you know, that this could happen. The impact would be 200,000 from losing this uh, contract. What if this customer quits altogether and withdraws all their business from, from, from our firm? That would be even worse, uh, obviously, but we think that there's a very low likelihood. Let's say this is what's come up through a um, risk map mapping process. It's now in a risk register. We can actually use that kind of information in, in um, simulations. So in the spreadsheet, let's set it up as follows, where we're using the risk discrete function then. And it refers to these numbers, the impact first, and then the probability over here. So there's a, the formula refers back to these inputs, right? And now the model is capable of simulating. That's, that's what the risk discrete function does. And uh, so, so now in, in, in your spreadsheet, the model delivers or returns this uh, simulated uh, distribution, which corresponds to our inputs, right? The two percent probability of a five hundred thousand. So you can see that the probability mass is low, but the impact is the worst of the three. But really, what did did we just accomplish? I mean, we basically just simulated what we assume. I mean, the numbers in the graph were exactly those in the input table, so we didn't make a lot of um, progress here, it seems. So um, maybe we can make it more interesting by connecting it to corporate performance. That's what we're here to do. So let's say this company does have a, a forecast to trying to manage their financial situation here by, by anticipating some of the revenues and costs. So what then? If we take the revenue number and add the customer loss to that so that the simulated number we just uh, looked at gets inputted here in, into the formula so, so that whenever that one of the risk events happen, it will reduce um, Revenue. revenue in the cell will be lower in, in those scenarios where that happens. We're also going to designate uh, operating income as a risk output variable because we want to do that so to understand a risk profile, right? How, how much uh, of this variability or this risk uh, ends up hitting operating income. So first we see that, okay, now we're, it's slightly more interesting, right? Because now we're seeing what happens to revenue in these cases uh, when there's a the customer uh, makes an exit here where, where uh, revenues is down by, you know, it's down here now. 
um, operating income in the same way is, is hit very badly in those scenarios. So here again, the tail risk uh, when the customer leaves would be very bad for the operating income, right? But here is the normal case, which, which is uh, uh, much more likely than as, as, as evidenced by the, the graph here. But still, maybe this is kind of back of the envelope. Maybe, maybe we're um, able to kind of get that or, you know, just by scribbling some numbers on, on a piece of paper, we can deduce that, okay, that is what would happen to revenue and operating profit. It's, it's kind of a, just uh, travels through the financials very straightforwardly here. But what then if we add just one more risk factor? Let's see if we are, uh, that conclusion would change. So let's say the materials expense is in US dollars. So, so this is a non-US firm, um, but they're purchasing their material from, from, from the US and, and that's quoted in, in US dollars. In this case, we can use some data we, because we're, if we're assuming it's a Norwegian firm, well then um, we can take the Norwegian currency versus the dollar uh, historically and, and use that to come up with a, a description of the magnitude of the uncertainty in that exchange rate. So here we, we have the, let's say some kind of a mean and standard deviation. Normally you wouldn't do that because it would be a terrible way to generate a forecast and it would exaggerate the uncertainty. You can apply slightly more uh, sophisticated uh, ways to come up with this uh, forecast and the similar levels, but never mind for now, keep it simple. But these are the parameters in the normal distribution. And um, what, um, and that is what we need to be able to generate some random numbers. So let's add a simulated risk factor here. Now, before we had a customer loss, now we have the exchange rate as well. We set it up as a normally distributed variable because the data analysis will show that it's actually fairly well behaved and approximate the normal quite well. So, so we can maybe justify that assumption here. So the forecast will be the number itself then in, in, uh, that we see here in the, in the spreadsheet. It will also incorporate the standard deviation number. That's the second sort of uh, argument in this function. And with that, you're now able to simulate around the forecast according to this information here, the standard deviation. And this material cost here will recalculate because it's now a dollar number we're assuming it's in all in dollars being translated back to Norwegian Krona through the exchange rate. So, so now there will be a connection. All the simulated uh, outcomes here will pass through here and lead to new numbers being generated here for, for the material, material costs. All right, so, well, now it's not so trivial anymore or, or obvious because you still have the, these, um, simulated um, outcomes with respect to the, the customer, right? The customer loss risk. So, but, but around that, in all this, these three scenarios, you still have the exchange rate uncertainty to live with. So that sort of compounds or, or the overall uncertainty. You're dealing with customer loss risk, but no matter that outcome, you still have the exchange rate. That, that is always going to fluctuate. So you get values uh, around that mean, right? So, and what if we're considering adding to the model some, some um, important benchmark levels of performance so that you have a cash need now. You, you realize that going forward, you would like to invest and take care of your interest expenses. That takes a certain amount of money here so that the operating income will be seen in relation to that. And the net cash flow will be the difference. And now we're seeing some scenarios where you're uh, actually falling below zero and that will, could possibly have some pretty bad um, consequences if you're, you're no longer able to invest or, or some consequence like that. So now it gets more interesting, right? Now we're seeing operating on a, on a more strategic level. And um, the question is, can we, can we learn more from these um, tools? Uh, one thing you can do is to bring out uh, our favorite function here, the if, <clears throat> and define net cash flow. If that is uh, below one, that, then it's a one. So we'll just register a one in that event. If it falls below zero, we're assuming that is a, a major risk for us now, a major concern that that, uh, if that happens. Otherwise, zero. 
So it will just kick in and show a one whenever this number turns this number turns negative, which is the difference between operating income and net cash flow. All right. And it turns out that we, we can now monitor this or, or learn from all these uh, simulations. <clears throat> Uh, because it, it turns out that you know we, we, we want to have an idea about what does it take for, for that threshold to be breached. And we can see that in the data in at risk, if you go to this menu here, the explore menu and you retrieve the data from the simulations. That helps us understand a little bit more what's going on. So we're basically talking about lots of different scenarios here. We've run 10,000 10, simulations. So this goes on for quite a bit in your spreadsheet. Uh, these are the 13 first scenarios out of 10,000, all right? So here you can see then how all of the things that we have risk adjusted in the model, they show up here. Here you have the simulated risk factors. Here you have the material materials cost, the operating income, and this variable then that is uh, a one if negative, uh, you have negative net cash flow. So we see here that you have lots of variability in the exchange rate. We're simulating that and we recalculate the materials costs in all these uh, scenarios so that this fluctuates because the exchange rate is fluctuating. Same thing for operating income, then it, it will reflect that uncertainty, but also the customer loss risk, which is over here. So that for the most part, being a low probability event, it only, uh, you know, it, it, it's zero. But occasionally it, simulates it draws a you know an event a risk event which means that the customer either cancels the contract or or leaves uh, or completely so that uh, in these two cases you the model is simulating um, a cancellation of one of the contracts right and as you can see operating income takes a hit the other numbers are much larger here there's a, an issue with the customer so there's a hit. Um, we can also continue to scroll down here. I mean, the negative net cash flow is very low probability. So, so it takes some scrolling to find uh, scenarios in which that happens. But here we have one. Scenario 316 out of 10,000. There, the model signals that, OK, that happened. We have net negative net um, cash flow in this scenario. And, and, and we can learn, you know, okay, what did it take for us to get there? Well, okay, we see that uh, a customer loss happened of the more serious sort that the customer walks out altogether. So that is seemingly associated with this very, very undesirable event. It also takes, it seems, a, a higher exchange rate because that will can help us uh, tip over <laughs> the precipice here. Um, so that this exchange rate uncertainty compounds the overall risk, right? That here you're suffering from a higher materials expense and you're also being hit by the customer walking out. So, and that lands you in this very um, unpleasant sort of territory where, where negative is, uh, cash flow is negative. So we're able to learn now from, from these scenarios what it, takes uh, for, for some of these really uh, undesired uh, consequences to occur and, and we can maybe manage our, our risk accordingly. Like, okay, this tells us that maybe we can get rid of some of that risk by, by managing the exchange rate risk uh, and so forth. So, so we can learn more about the risk uh, profile here through this uh, spreadsheet based simulation. It contains lots of information and lots of ways to, to get more insights and, and, and learn and um, arrive at a better risk management strategy. All right, so some conclusions. So simulations are scenarios in, in very large numbers. They are allow us to uh, incorporate uncertainty into spreadsheet models. They become risk adjusted and capable of simulations then. So to, to get there, we have to describe uh, these random processes involved and connect that to corporate performance. And it takes data or subjective probabilities um, to do that. And um, the, be the benefit we get from all this is the higher level analytics, right? We, we can visualize risk in a, in a way we never could before, and we can show the effect of corporate risk policies on the risk profile very conveniently. 
So those are very uh, real benefits indeed. And, and as long as we can avoid uh, forgetting that uh, the world also has some uh, real black swans and while it's said they we're going to be able to benefit from, from this as well. All right, so uh, please check out my books. There's more information on my webpage. Please like and subscribe and have a good day.